everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you guys enjoy the videos, you can support us by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you like my sunglasses, you can go to their website that's in the description. And if you use the code that's also in the description, you can get 15% off. You guys like that intro? Thank you, I thought of it myself. We're back to scrapping today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Cole, I am also known as the Corn Star. And right now I'm renovating my 1917 farmstead. Ooh, I just about tripped over that. We have a long way to go, and a short time to get there, but my name's not Bandit, but we're gonna get her done. Okay, I have a lot of energy this morning, and I don't really know why. But anyhow, we got the dump truck loaded, super sketchy-like. So Neva and I are gonna take a quick trip to the scrapyard, and we're gonna come back, and we're gonna get this mess cleaned up. Dr. Cornstar. Just in case it's a bearish tone. Just wanted to make sure we have a floor on, on the price. Sounds good to me. Okay, sounds like a plan. All right, thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Mr. Cornstar. Talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, bye. Business stuff. What you doing up there, Neva? <laughs> So we are just about to the scrapyard. Neva, what's your prediction? I'm gonna guess 3,000 pounds and $200. I'm guessing, ooh, 6,100 pounds, $247.21. Tell you what, it's like Chicago around here with all the traffic going on. Yay. He's over exaggerating. Uh, I just got before. Yeah, I got you waiting for a repair. We're gonna go dump. That's a really nice semi to be in a scrapyard. Wow. Where'd you go? Oh. <laughs> We're definitely upping our metal game here because this pile was not as big last time. We brought a lot of stuff this time. All right, let's get out of here before we get in trouble for dumping in the middle of the driveway. All right, here's the moment of truth. We were both pretty close. 5,380 pounds, $215.20. I think I was closer though. Now we have the long drive home. Back to the scrap pile. dig a grave so that was very very nice of Neva to help me she's gonna run the skid loader and I know last time the wind kind of picked up and uh, it blew over a stone so hopefully today the wind don't blow that hard to do that kind of damage out here we'll see if we can get Neva to work and uh, get this grave dug it might be hard to hear out here at the cemetery me and Neva we're digging a grave today and the wind is a hurricane again so once Cole gets us a good camera so we can get rid of the wind, we'll be able to do a lot more filming out here. Neva's over there. It doesn't really look like it, but we're making progress. This little pile of junk used to be an old building and they built it up on these concrete forms and then the wood just kind of rotted through. This is just wide enough where I can get the skid loader in it. So I'm trying to push through to the other side. As usual, it's not running quite as smoothly as I'd like it to. Apparently this used to be the entrance to the building because back in the day, dad and grandpa must've stacked a bunch of dirt here that had a whole bunch of bricks and cinder blocks and rocks. But when I was trying to come around from the other side I kept getting hung up in the middle so I was just gonna come to this side and then push it all out in the open but the old dirt rock Rick Brandt wow that is hard to say but the old dirt rock brick ramp was in the way so I've been trying to claw in here a little bit so that way I'll have a straight access to this bay and I can push everything out but I have a little problem I have a piece of metal that's wedged in here under the track and if I don't take care of that it's either gonna tear my track or it's gonna pop my track off and I don't want either of those things so I think I can get a crowbar back here and I might be able to pry it out it's wedged in there pretty good this isn't your typical gravel road but DC thinks we can drive a semi on it so I'm following um we're stuck. I'm cruising down this little dirt road and all at once I hit a big wet spot and I am 
stuck. So I'm hoping I can unload the equipment. The hard part is gonna be getting the ramps back up in the mud. I thought I hit it fast enough, Dave, but it sucked me in. I am so close to being able to drive out. Now I'm gonna have to wash the skid loader. What was Neva doing? Looked like she drove the semi right through the mud hole. Oh my gosh. Good thing I was in the pickup following Neva. I'll have to stop and see if she needs any help. Poor girl. I should just drive by. She might want help if I stop. Hi Neva. I'm stuck. Did you have some issues? You need to learn how to drive. <laughs> That's right, it's all about the ratings, Neva said. We are stuck in the mud. Help came to help me. These are the same ones last year that got stuck in the field with their combine. Look at the track spin. Yeehaw! Perfect, perfect. I was kind of worried we'd never get out of there. Daddy Cornstar really called out the whole crew. <laughs> <laughs> they came to the rescue right away. That was really nice of them. Man, those tractors can really pull some weight. I was not expecting it to actually pull it out, and it pulled it out so quickly. That's insane. I knew tractors were strong, but I just didn't realize they were that strong. I'm guessing we're gonna be here a while because all these guys came out and they're talking. <laughs> oh, great. I didn't feel like tackling the piece of metal stuck in the bobcat right away. So I went inside, ate a late lunch. It's like 5.30 right now. I might be able to con someone into help me. Hey, do you want to help me for a second? Ugh. Okay, we need to clear out some of this dirt and then hopefully we can get that piece of metal out. Ugh. It got pried in there, so I don't see why we should be able to pry it out. Usually, if you can get one end out first, put it in there and pry it away from that. Uh, looks like a thing you'd lock your bike to a bike rack with. No, oh, we got it. Wouldn't be a complete day on the farm if we didn't get a good workout in. Lacing up his squat shoes. It's about time you show up. We have another situation now. Apparently, Mama Cornstar is making a family dinner. I had no idea. I should probably get to that because I don't want to get in trouble by Mama Cornstar. Because that is not fun at all. I'm in the uh, Hagee sprayer, running it into our local tire shop. The tires on this thing, this sprayer is a 2005 Hagee, and it's got like 3,900 hours on the sprayer. We still have the original tires. They're looking a little bit so-so this year and it's making us a little bit nervous. We decided we probably better put some new tires on it and then have them blow out in the middle of the field and then uh, the tire man would not be very happy trying to jack it up on a hill or out in the soft ground so it's easier just to get it done now. It's money that we don't want to spend but man I'd hate to have them blow out during the season or something or going down the road and wipe out in the ditch. I actually have my seat belt on going down the road with a sprayer at 30 miles per hour if that thing would lock up or hit something, you would shoot through the front windshield so fast, you wouldn't even be able to say goodbye to your seat. So that kind of made me think on that the other day. Mainly when Cole was running this sprayer down the road the other day and one of the hubs locked up for a quick second and it broke loose, but it shot a hole through the hub on the side of the sprayer. If that thing would have stayed locked up, it would have just threw him in the ditch as quick as all get out. So I guess the word of the day is safety. Seat belts are there for a reason. I know sometimes they're a <clears throat> pain in the butt to put on, but man, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be laying on the gravel road with a whole bunch of gravel stuck in me and then spending months healing and stuff. Seat belts there for a reason, so I'm, I, I do got mine on. I'm cruising down the road right now at 31 miles per hour, which I know it don't seem fast, but at a dead stop, a few little windshields on this, steering wheel into your chest, maybe break a few ribs. Ah, uh, speaking of ribs, I'm kind of hungry for some ribs. T-bone, ribeye, oh, it all sounds good. I'm ready to start doing some grilling. It's that time of year, guys, so. Okay, enough talking for me. Let's get this thing in so we can get new tires on it. Today, in the shop, we have the 16 row in here, and we just got it kind of serviced yesterday. Put some new frogs in it. We found a crack, or dad found a crack. You can see it. it goes here, here, 
and then this whole seam right here back. So I'm gonna move all this, the hoses, the wires. Um, I'm unhooking stuff right now. Grind everything down, grind the cracks, and then we'll weld everything up, maybe throw a plate on it, and it should be good. Here's a better view of it. Crack here, here, and then on this factory weld here, it snapped. And as you look, there was no penetration on that weld from the day it left the factory, which a lot of welding. So, I mean, anyone can screw up, but that's a pretty important weld right there that snapped. And then in here, if you can see it, there's a crack in there. Not sure I'm gonna weld him, but I think we'll figure it out. At least we got a lot of strength left in here. We still got to weld here and then it's him on the other side. And then it goes all the way around. It's not super worried about that one, but we'll try to get her. Now we're back. Family dinner was good. Mama Cornstar made ham. Oh. Ham with ham gravy. Doesn't get much better than that. So now we're continuing the project. I didn't say this was gonna be fast. There's a lot of sorting there that's gonna be going on here. We have metal mixed in with wood, mixed in with concrete blocks, and all three things have to be separated. There's no time like the present, so we might as well get to it. We're gonna start by continuing to remove this ramp that used to lead up into the building, so that way I can get into this bay and I can push everything out of it. And then we're gonna make three piles. Metal pile, a wood pile, and a concrete pile. After this pile of stuff, all the other ones should be fairly smooth sailing because they're just separated piles of metal. But this one's all intertwined. Remember that piece of metal we had stuck in the skid loader track? Now yeah, we got another one. Except this one wrapped up behind the final drive. In other words, it's gonna be hard to get out. to do this without having to take the track off but I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be able to I got one other option plan B oh yep whoops now this might work, this might not work. What I did is I drilled a hole through this pipe and now I have the chain attached to it. So we're gonna hook the chain up to the truck and we're gonna get a little bit of tension on it. And then I'm gonna try to wiggle the skid loader a little bit and hopefully that pipe will slide right out. That pipe is stuck behind this final drive. Can wiggle it with my hands so I know it's not trapped in there super tight, but it's just tight enough where I can't pull it out. So I suppose let's give it a shot. Little sneaky guy was playing hard to get out. I won't lie to you guys. I'm a little surprised that worked, but I'm glad it did. As Zach Johnson would do. Not the best, but it'll do. I should have done a different type of weld here. I did MIG, but I should have done a higher volt and I could have done one big bead in there, but I did three, so it'll hold. Not too worried about it. These turned out pretty good, so. Oh well, on to the next project. We're getting closer. We got one bay all cleared out and then this one's halfway done. The sky's starting to urinate on me a little bit, so we're gonna call it a day. Just got a little bit of trash to sort through here and then just need to separate out the metal from the wood there. And then we'll really start to notice a change. I'm happy with the progress I made today. It's also starting to get cold and I'm getting hungry. Now I'm just complaining. Hey, Dad. Hey, cool. Me and Mama Cornstar have been running around to a bunch of cemeteries today. A bunch of the graves we dug since harvest. You know, over the winter they settle, so we were touching up graves today and then uh, reseeding them with new grass seed and we had one to cover today also. We've been out all over the wet place today. Seems like I had a little crack up there but I think he did a good job. Did a real good job. Looks nice. Just give you a little recap what we did today. It was kind of a run around day. Thank you so much Mama Cornstar. It was really nice spending the day with you. This morning I got up. Cooper was going to do some welding on the planter quick and then he's been kind of working on that. So I had to get the planter out this morning, unfold it for him here in the shop. And then I took the sprayer into 
a tire shop, our local tire shop. They put on some new rubber on the front. I guess the back, we're hoping it'll make it through the season. And otherwise, it's just been a big run around day for mama and me running to cemeteries. Trying to think if I forgot anything. Can't think of anything.